Okay, so we're going to do an informal video today. The other day I posted uh, some something I was working on on Twitter and it seemed very popular and I have received some DMs. How did you do that? I don't have the original because it was a work in progress at the time, but I'm going to show you how to do this transform. So we start off with a, a normal stock metahuman and then by the end we get this. And obviously, this is all happening in real time. To approach this, what I did is I brought in a stock metahuman, stock hair, stock makeup. I had a vision inside of my head before I went to bed. It was like, well, how could I do this? How can I transform it in the shortest time possible? Because I didn't have much time and make it look like it's something amazing when it's just a basic transformation. And so I started with the stock metahuman. What is essentially happening is I'm playing with light and the materials of the metahuman over time. As we can see, there is also a change in the post process. As we have a look, we're heavily saturated here. And then as we get to the end, it's almost or is in black and white. And there we go. Right, so let's break down this particular scene for you. Let's go to unlit mode because it'd be easy to see. So in the background, I have this plane. Let's jump out of cinematic mode. So I have my metahuman. I have this plane with an image from pexels.com, completely free to use. And then a camera. And then the metahuman lighting presets. Um, this particular one is the split lighting preset. The pack is available on the Epic Marketplace. And what I've done with the light parent is brought it into sequencer. Here. Yeah. And then over time, I'm adjusting the transform, the location, and the rotation. So if we scroll along, as you can see, these values here are changing over time. Let me just put it back into lit mode for you. And I'm just moving the light to obscure the face. So if we get to here, look, there's oddly anything lighting up the face. And the reason for that is because I'm changing the normal of my metahuman right here. And if, if it was lit up, when I bump up the normals, because there's a high contrast, I'm adjusting the contrast over time in the post process. We'll get to that. It would look strange if you could see all the face. So it's, it's better just to obscure it. Think about it's like a magician. Look at you're looking at one hand, but the magician is doing something with the other hand. That's all it is. So we get to there. Everything's pretty much obscured. And then we slowly bring the light back to light up the face to reveal the change. Now, the only other thing going on here, which I will not be covering today because I've got another video regarding this, is that if you look, the character has hair, but then over time, by the time we reach the end, there is no hair. And if you look very carefully, let's put it in unlit mode, the hair is disappearing. I am going to cover this in another, actually a tutorial. So that will be soon. So I'll not cover that today. Let's go back into cinematic mode. Right. So obviously we have a camera. It is doing a basic dolly zoom. And then the plane, I don't think I'm, am I actually moving the plane? Yeah. So I'm slightly adjusting the brightness of the plane. It's an actually an emissive. If we open that up, let's have a look. Yeah. So it's got a brightness value which I'm adjusting over time. Let me do this, look, see, like this. And it, you can barely notice it, but it's just, so, so it's brighter here if you look, then it's dark here, and then it gets brighter towards the end. And it, it's because I want the, the background to be brighter at the end than the character's face. Okay, so that's the plane. And then 
we have a post process contrast settings so over time the contrast will increase so as we get to black and white i think it's bumped up to 1.45 and it starts at one and there just to show you if i crank up the contrast that's what we're adjusting okay obviously that's way too much and then saturation it's saturation is quite high to begin with 1.45 I have made some adjustments uh, to the levels in the shadows, the mids, and the highlights, uh, just so it wasn't blown out. And then over time, saturation decreases until we get to about... Oh, it is actually zero, so there's no saturation here. And that's it. That's what gives that effect. Okay, on to the metahuman. I've already said I'm not going to be doing the hair. For the face, I simply click the track button and find the material instance that I am looking to adjust. So zero, if we open up our MetaHuman, let me just show you this. And we we'll go to viewport and face. If we find the materials, there they are. Element zero is the head texture and then we have teeth the eyes etc and this is important element zero element one element two and so what i would do in sequencer i would add a track for this material instance in this case element zero and then i would click parameter here and I would find the value I want to alter. In this case, it is normal intensity. And what I've done with normal intensity is over time, I've increased the normal way beyond what is normally acceptable. So uh, my original plan was to do go to Meta Human Creator and create a wrinkly character. But I decided that would take too much time and I had a lot to do. So I just thought, well, why don't I just bump up the normal and see what it looks like? And this is the result. You get kind of a, uh, the skin is kind of pop marked. And what I'm looking for is the contrast between the light and the dark. So when I bumped up the normal, it did exactly what I wanted. And so, yep, yeah, I've actually bumped that up way up. It's like um, seven. So I go from one to seven for normal intensity. The next part I did element three and four, which are the eyes. And then I added a parameter again and I did iris brightness and pupil scale. And what this does is I've covered this in another tutorial before. It's making the eyes brighter over time. So when we reach here, the eyes are glowing because the brightness is turned up. Let me just try and turn one of them up. You see, if you look at this eye here, when I crank that up, it, is, it ends up bright. Not too bright, but bright enough. Because if when we start, this person has brown eyes. So it needs to be cranked up quite a bit. And then look, in certain lighting conditions, they, they now glow. At the same time, I'm adjusting the pupil scale. So at the beginning, although it's difficult to see because the character has brown eyes, the pupils are large, they're dilated. But by the end, the pupils are very tiny, which for me gives a really creepy, creepy vibe. And then the next track, element four, is just for the other eye the right eye, and I've repeated the exact same thing. The only thing that was missing, because I was working with limited time, is the teeth. I would like to have altered the teeth over time, but I completely missed that. But say you were doing this, I would advise you to do that as well, because the teeth don't really go with the character. What I will say about the hair... I will include this one thing, is that over time, as I'm moving the lights around, I've adjusted the roughness of the hair 
So when the light shines onto the top of the head, for example, you don't get those bright spots that blow out the highlights. And then by the end, it's not that important because there is no hair. And that's it. Nothing special. Anybody can do this. You just adjust those basic parameters over time. And this would be the result. If you found today's content useful, if you're on YouTube, remember to like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. If you're watching on Twitter, please give me a follow and maybe a retweet. Also, you can follow me over on Instagram or Facebook. If you would like to support me further, you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Joe Butsu and help me there. If you're on YouTube, you can hit the thanks button underneath this video and help that way. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.